Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be diving deep into uh, Azure Active Directory groups and how we can use them within the Power Platform. Uh, this, My name is Joe Griffin, uh, I'm also known as the CRM chap, uh, and this video is also continuing my series uh, all about the PL600 exam, which is a solution architect exam for those working with the Power Platform. So just to give you a bit of background, first of all, so AAD groups, Azure Active Directory groups, come into play in a few different ways uh, when it comes to the Power Platform. Typically, uh, in the context of Dataverse, as opposed to any of the other sort of types of services, and effectively, we can use these as a mechanism to be able to manage, you know, how our particular environments, you know, our groupings of different users, and also as well con to, to control access to particular environments based on membership of a particular group or not. Um, so to start off with, we, we need to make sure that we've got a group ready to go and created on our particular uh, environment. So you can see that I'm in the Azure Active Directory Admin Center at the moment. Um, I, to create a group, all I need to do is click on to the Azure Active Directory option up here. Go down to groups at the bottom. I'm going to create a brand new group, which I'm just going to call, uh, it's going to be just a standard security group. I'll just call this my PO600 demo. Uh, and for this particular group, I'm just going to add my own user account into this into this group, like so. Create that, and then now we have just a very sort of basic security group created on the tenant that we can use for some of the uh, the demos that sort of follow. It can take a few moments just for it to appear in the list down here. We might just need to just do a bit of a refresh, uh, or maybe scroll down just to find it. But yeah, the group should now be existing on the tenant and should be available for us to start using. So one of the first uh, ways in which we can use uh, an Azure Active Directory uh, group uh, is to um, control who can access a particular Dataverse environment that we've got set up. So if I navigate back to my first tab up here, where we're in the Power Platform Admin Center, if I click on to my PL600 environment at the top like so, what we can see on the details screen, and this will be an option when we create the environment for the very first time, is that we've got a security group option. And we can see for this particular environment that we've got no assigned security group to the environment. Now, why might we want to assign a security group to, um, to an environment? Well, for the simple reason, just so we can control who has access to it. So if we've, let's say, got several different environments, maybe a dev test and production environment, we want to maybe ensure that all of our core users in a production system have access to just that system alone and don't necessarily then have access to our uh, dev or test environments and then vice versa we might also want to ensure that our developers can't access production so using security groups we can control that uh, security groups um, is recommended as well because typically what happens these days when it comes to our microsoft 365 licensing all of those users will receive a dataverse license um, by sort of default so what this can mean is that we end up having every single user on our tenant appearing in every single environment that we've got and if we're quite a large organization this can be quite a lot of users um, so with our security groups we can manage that in a much more effective way um, so to go into an existing environment and to be able to sort of just uh, modify the security group we will just click onto the edit tab up here we can see we've got a pencil icon next to our security group option down there we can just sort of click on that and then search for our new sort of security group, which you can see has now appeared, PL600 demo. Click on done and then save that like so. And now what's going to happen is that it's going to then apply this to the environment. It's going to look to check that all of the users in the environment currently uh, are in the security group. If they are, then they're left in the system as a, as a user. Otherwise, the user account will be deactivated and will no longer be able to go into the environment and be able to access it. And this can sometimes take just a few minutes uh, to uh, kick in each time. If we want to do this for a completely new environment, then the options and the steps are pretty much the same. So we just click onto new environment at the top. Uh, we make sure that we create a database for this environment. So I'll just call this uh, PL600 demo. I'm not going to save this particular environment. Now we can see in this tab down here, here's the option for security group. And we just follow the same steps again to be able to get that added on and to ensure that we can control access. Uh, into the new environment and you know doing that as a first step when we create the environment is recommended so that we're not then you know as I say ended up creating every single user in our tenant into the environment and then clogging up the database with that uh, information so that's one way we can use our security groups the second is um, more from a sort of a um, 
again from a sort of management standpoint but more relates to some of the existing functionality that we've got in data for some security standpoint um, so what we can look to do for example is link out any uh, AAD group that we've created to a team record that we create in the system uh, and therefore you know have it so that we can manage things a lot more centrally on the Azure Active Directory side and not have to have sort of duplicate team records set up in Dataverse uh, that are effectively doing the same sort of thing. It just gives us a means of being able to manage things in a much more effective manner. So what I can look to do is in my environment is click on settings at the top. I'm going to expand the user and permissions section and then click on teams like so. I'm going to create a brand new team. So I'll just call this maybe my uh, PL600 uh, AAD demo. We'll select the root business unit uh, and then under team type we can see that we've got an option there for AAD security group and AAD office group. Now the main difference between these is that an AAD office group will be one of those sort of Microsoft 365 groups that you typically set up that has like a team site and a SharePoint location and things like that whereas a security group uh, is just effectively just a, an active directory only component without all of that sort of corresponding um, additional things included with it. So because we created the group as a security group that's the option we need to select what we can then do is then look to search for this on the tenant and we can see there it is PL600 uh, demo and then we can define in terms of what the membership type will be for this particular uh, for this particular sort of team that we for this demo I'm just going to leave it as the default uh, members and guests I just finally just need to add on an administrator for this so I'm, going, I'm just going to choose my email address click on the next button then the process from here uh, will be the fairly similar to setting up a normal team as we saw in one of the previous videos in this series do check that out if you haven't already so what we can do at this point is then maybe just assign a security role to that uh, and then this particular uh, team will have all of the same members that are currently present in on the azure Active directory side and we can sort of click into it at any point that will then take us out into the classic interface where we can view some further details regarding the group and also its various different properties so we can see uh, some of the same details that we defined slightly earlier on here. Uh, it's also been able to pull in the other useful details from the AAD side, including the object ID. And we can see that it's been able to add me in as a member successfully, uh, you know, based on what's been defined uh, on the on the Azure side. So definitely thinking about using these different um, um, using AAD groups can be beneficial in in two sort of primary ways. And really, as a solution architect, we should be thinking about opportunities to leverage what already exists in the environment already, uh, instead of having to then waste time to go in and recreate teams again. Far better instead if, for example, we've got an existing sales team on the Azure Active Directory side. Uh, with all the members in far better if we can maybe use that instead and just create it in dataverse as an aad security group uh, or microsoft 365 group instead uh, if if it's going to be prudent for us to do so so that pretty much wraps it up for uh, this video so i hope you found this useful uh, as part of preparing for the uh, pl600 exam please do check out the other videos in the series please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel uh, and i'll see you again next time cheers